a very interesting topic for discussion at the ESMO meeting was the topic of leptomeningeal disease in patients with solid tumor malignancies. This condition appears to be increasing in incidence, and there are a number of hypotheses as to the underlying reasons for the increased observation of leptomeningeal disease that is seen in the clinic today. A simple explanation for this could be that our imaging techniques continue to evolve and improve. We're doing thinner and thinner slice volumetric MR imaging with better and better resolution and with better types of contrast materials. These allow us to identify disease that we could not readily identify in the past. And there is clearly a possibility that some patients with minimal leptomeningeal disease who would not have been identified as such in the past are now being identified more readily with refined and sophisticated MR imaging. And this in part could contribute to the increased incidence of leptomeningeal disease that we appear to be observing in the clinic. But perhaps another reason explaining this trend could be the effectiveness of our systemic therapies in controlling extracranial disease. In many disease sites, the use of targeted therapeutics, as well as immune checkpoint inhibition, is resulting in longer and longer survival because of improved extracranial disease control. Our rates of intracranial disease control have not yet matched those of extracranial disease control for most of these patients. There are some exceptions, but for the majority of these patients, intracranial disease control rates lag behind the extracranial control rates. This implies that the brain or the central nervous system might continue to remain an effective sanctuary for tumor cells. And these tumor cells can then manifest either as brain metastasis or as leptomeningeal disease. And in part, this could also explain the increased incidence of leptomeningeal disease. Unfortunately, our therapeutic advances in this disease remain limited. We have few effective therapeutics that cross the blood-brain barrier in adequate concentration to eradicate leptomeningeal disease for the majority of patients. Indeed, patients with targetable mutations have anecdotally shown dramatic responses in a number of case reports. And so this does remain an interesting area of treatment selection for a minority of patients with leptomeningeal disease. If targetable mutations are identified, next generation drugs targeting some of these mutations do cross the blood-brain barrier and perhaps could be effective in some patients. But for the majority of these patients, our drugs and systemic therapeutics remain less than ideal in terms of controlling the disease. And therefore, leptomeningeal metastasis remains a significant challenge in oncology. Clearly, radiotherapy continues to have a role in this disease, especially in patients with symptomatic disease, where at least palliation can be achieved with the use of focal or broad radiotherapeutic approaches. There are some interesting clinical trials that are actually attempting to combine craniospinal radiation with systemic therapeutics. Craniospinal radiation is clearly highly marrow suppressive because of the vast amount of bone marrow that would be irradiated. And in at least a couple of clinical trials, proton radiotherapy is being considered in patients that have a high performance status and where craniospinal radiation might potentially show an advantage in combination with therapeutics that are controlling at least the extracranial disease. So this remains an active area of investigation, but we need to do more and better because our outcomes to date are unsatisfactory. 